Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 524. Prostate medicines are interfering with some men's love life. BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Moffin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moffin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Moffin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Moffin's office is currently accepting new patients. I've always heard that as I get older, as a male, if I get older and I live long enough and nothing else kills me, prostate cancer will. That's and what you've been told. the theories are eventually we all get it and you know some of some men get it and live a long time with it. Others get it and die pretty quickly. But what they say is if something else doesn't kill you, that certainly will. You'll eventually so get it as a male. Prostate seems to be the bad guy. Prostate seems to be you. the bad guy. But the prostate is a, is a necessary organ in men and produces the ejaculate that mm-hmm. carries sperm so that we can uh, procreate. So, I mean, Which if we don't, if we don't for do, our do culture, that, it's a necessary yeah, it's thing. A necessary <laughs> Not thing. for an individual man, but yeah. for society at yeah. large. Yeah. So, um, so but the prostate isn't just about cancer. As men get older and have more estrogen in their bodies. They also have more DHT, dihydrotestosterone, in their bodies. That's kind of a normal process for men. As their testosterone drops, these other two things go up. The outcome of that is usually that your prostate gets bigger. And it doesn't just get bigger on the outside. It it encases the urethra. So the urethra runs through the prostate. So the prostate starts squeezing down on the urethra. That's where you pee from. Right. You know, so and where the ejaculate comes from through. So your prostate is actually <laughs> squeezing your urethra. So, so that's, you can't. That's the tube that carries the liquid, the, yeah, the, the urine, and, urine the ejaculate and the ejaculate so, through your penis. So it is something that is miserable if you have a really large prostate and it's squeezing the, the urethra. You can't pee. It feels like when if you're a woman, it feels like a bladder infection for uh, that's how men have described it. Like women, women have bladder infection. They can pee just a little bit, just a little bit, but they feel like they're still full. Because their bladder swells up and, and their bladder is really off. irritated, and so it just can't. They they, they just can't get the uh, urethra to open up and, right. and pee. But but for but for men, this is the prostate kind of strangling it. Well, and I, I'm in my seventies. My father used to talk to his friends, and at a certain age, they all got what was called a roto-rooter job. Yeah, Turk. Uh, Transurethral resection of the prostate. Means they, they send this little device in through your penis and open it up. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm and, not, and they still do that procedure. That's yes, not that it's unusual. A, but, they, but we have better medicines now. Right, and there are other procedures that seem to work better. Mm-hmm. So not as many men get that, but it's still something that they can get mm-hmm. uh, and, and sometimes is necessary. And that was kind of like everybody got that. I mean, oh, yeah, my, like my dad was so me. proud after he'd gotten it because he could, now, well, you he know, was so happy his could volume. Pee. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it makes a big difference in your life when you don't have to get strain. up and go to the bathroom and yeah. strain all the time. Or I mean, you can't sleep yeah. if you're getting up you know, all four night. Four or five times a night. So, so this is why we use medicine for prostate enlargement. It's not about really prostate cancer, although prostate cancer concern. gives us that feeling of, uh, you know, we worry about the prostate because of cancer. But you can always wor- also worry about your prostate because you can't pee. And that, that ends up being a problem. You get infections and things like that. So it has to be remedied. So this gentleman wrote, a mid-60s age gentleman, wrote a letter to Dr. Roach and said, I was having urinary problems. Couldn't get the flow that I needed, the volume that I mm-hmm. needed. And my doctor put me on a medicine, uh, Tamulosin. Tamulosin, and that reduces the swelling in the prostate mm-hmm. and then helps me have a better urine flow. Mm-hmm. But one of the side effects that I am noticing is that when my wife and I have sex, I have completely lost the ability to have an ejaculation. 
And so my wife is upset about that. I'm upset about that. Is that caused by this drug? And is there something that I can do about it? And and that's a common complaint when men fill out the forms before they come in. You know, we ask them that question because oftentimes it, it can be from, if they don't have the prostate symptoms, it can be from not enough testosterone or too, or too much DHT. So we want to know if they're, they're having that and if they're having problems with their ejaculate so that we can address it and try to fix it. So we also ask if they've got urinary problems. So, so we want to know everything so that we can put that together and try to help not only their testosterone level, but, but their uh, prostate. So Dr. Roach was explaining that in men, there are two different systems that participate in a successful sexual encounter. Mm -hmm. One is an erection, and that the parasympathetic uh, nervous system controls your ability to have an erection. Parasympathetic is the vasodilator. So the parasympathetic nerves cause your vessels to dilate. Okay. Okay. So when, when they dilate, they fill they with fill blood, the, and they that fill the penis up. causes the erection. Mm -hmm. And so that is not affected by the tamulosin. No. The sympathetic nerve uh, or nervous system that is impacted by the tamulosin is the one that controls the flow. The e of ejaculation. Of, a, of ejaculation. Your... And he said this particular drug about 30% of the time, uh, causes men to notice a very reduced uh, flow of ejaculate or not able to do it at all. Right, but, but they said they did a study, and 90% of the people that took tamulosin had a, had a decreased amount of ejaculate. Right. So it, even if you don't complain about it and you, you, it doesn't bother you, it's still there, so you have less. So And Dr. Roach didn't go further in saying, he said, mm -hmm. yes, this is a side effect of this drug, and there may mm -hmm. be other things that you want to try. there's another that. drug you could probably try, and uh, that's, so this is kind of new for me. So Uroaxatral, U-R-O-X-A-T-R-A-L, does not do that, but also, but does help the, help the symptom of blocking the urethra when you're trying to urinate. Okay. So it, it's, a, it's effective like tamulosin, but doesn't have the same side effect. So, so you doctor will put you on the one he thinks is best for you initially, right. evaluate the results, switch you to the other one if, if you that's have, necessary. If you, have, if you complain or you have problems. Okay. Uh, but I, I made the point to Dr. Maupin that uh, I was surprised that Dr. Roach didn't address the concern about not having any ejaculate as being an issue between the man and his wife about their sense of sexual compatibility or satisfaction. Men do not have to produce ejaculate in order to have an orgasm. You can mm -hmm. have all of the release functions of an orgasm without producing a fluid flow. If you learn that that can be done and learn how to do it, then you can still have the joy and satisfaction of a sexual encounter without the visual evidence of release. And That's he didn't mention that. He just said, well, there's some right. other medicines. Let's let's go here. Mm -hmm. And so I brought that up to Dr. Moffin. She said, well, let's talk about it, and mm -hmm. let's explain to people this is also something. Uh, there, there actually is a whole subset of sexual education that you can get called tantric sex, and you can read about it. You can look it up on the web. That teaches people how to have satisfying sexual encounters without the release of ejaculate. Mm -hmm. Uh, and if you can teach yourself that intentionally, even if nothing's wrong with your prostate, then you can also make the mental transition. If something's wrong with your prostate, you can still have satisfying sex. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so it's not, it's not a hidden or subconscious message to your wife uh, about her be. desirability or performance. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a natural adjustment that your body makes, and you can learn to compensate for it. And if, if you... You need that to happen physically. It's like if you you need the urine flow, then obviously you have to deal with the prostate. You have to take the medicines that will allow you to have the urine flow. It's very but you important. don't have to have the other uh, mm -hmm. unless you're trying to have babies. Right. So, and the reason doctors don't really think about this is because doctors don't really talk about sex as a as a healthy as an thing, interpersonal experience. Or it, right. Or or yeah. or as an. Uh, it, it is not on their radar. That's not that's not what they're talking about. Yeah. It wasn't what we were trained to talk about. Although all of a sudden, halfway through the last thirty years, they said, "Oh yeah, you're supposed to talk about sex." <laughs> <laughs> kind of like that. So, 
we're, OBs are going, what, huh? You know, so basically this is, um, this is something, the ejaculate is something that if you're making babies, it's very important. You have to have enough ejaculate to carry the sperm. But if you're not having babies and you can have an orgasm, the ejaculate really is moot. Mm -hmm. Now, there's some men who have told me that they just have to have the ejaculate. They just, that's something they have to have to feel like they've been successful. And, and I understand that. That, that is, that's a, a common personal need. So um, with patients that don't, aren't on these medicines, we give them arginine ornithine, which is a, is a combination of amino acids as a supplement. And they take that, and usually they get a little bit more ejaculate. Um, the one thing that does cause less ejaculate is a vas. If you've had a vasectomy, then there's a contribution um, of ejaculate from where the sperm is, is stored. Mm -hmm. So about a third of the volume will decrease. So you'll still have two-thirds of the and volume. And that's not a prostate issue. That's because you've had the vasectomy. That's because you've had the vasectomy. And okay. so that's a normal finding after vasectomy. So it's, that doesn't mean you're not going to have any, but you'll have less than you would have. If you're dehydrated, you'll have less. A lot of people get freak out because, oh, no, I'm not having an ejaculate. But they were, they were out playing golf in the heat, and then they came back, and they didn't drink enough water, and then they had sex, and then there was no ejaculate. They were worried. Um, that, that's something that you have to make sure you have enough fluid on board to actually fill your penis with blood. I mean, if you're dehydrated, you may not be able to do that, and you may not be able to ejaculate because you have to have fluid there too. So th these, are the, these are things that um, men rarely talk about. Oh, no, men don't talk about that. They, they, but they talk about, they talk about it in my office because I asked the question. Right. But they don't talk about it to their primary doctors well, because but it's you, embarrassing. You schedule a minimum of an hour yeah. for conversation mm -hmm. with a new patient. Mm -hmm. And most doctors can give you five to seven minutes. I know, which is... That's the that's the that's one of the concerns. downfall of medicine, <laughs> you know. And and talking about crossovers of fields in my field, which is counseling and psychology, there are other concerns. And and Dr. Moffin's field, it's all about the physiology and the mechanics, mm -hmm. and she's more sensitive to these other concerns than many physicians seem to be. I have a concern regarding this topic about young adults. What I have been reading in the literature of the last three or four years, is that more and more young adults are pretty heavily invested in watching pornography, mm -hmm. and they uh, don't realize, they don't know that pornography is uh, an artificial production. It's not a national, mm -hmm. natural encounter. And it's they not don't, what you should expect at home. Exactly. And so then they, they develop these distorted views about what sex is supposed to be like and what the relationship between the male and female is supposed to be. And one of these misunderstandings has to do with the volume of sperm that is produced. Mm -hmm. Because in the pornographic movies, they always show that. In real life, it's not always seen. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and so they, they think they're supposed to behave and perform the way the stars in the movies do. Okay, so I learned something here because I don't know a lot about this subject. And um, I think most women don't know as much as men. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I, I could be wrong about that. But um, you told me how they make it's, the ejaculate. It's camera angle. It, it's an artificial produced fluid, and it's used through a tube and a pump that they, shoots out so that you can see it and be amazed by the, the what they call the money shot. Yeah. Uh, and, and I had no idea. It, it's it was, part of the industry. It's part of the technology of the industry. But again, if, if you're a teenage boy just watching the movies, you think, well, that's what I'm supposed to do, and that's the way I'm supposed to do it. Mm -hmm. So that's a concern for me. I know we're I talking know. about prostates no, I, and older no. men. But that but doesn't matter when you're, you were a teenage boy once. <laughs> and so some people carry all I've of those a lot beliefs of as, they, as, yeah. they, as they go. I mean, some don't change what yeah. they believe is normal. Right. And the teenage boys have a lot more ejaculate usually than yeah. adult men because their, their testosterone their bodies is really are high. Their bodies are, 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 were meant to... Procreate. Well, but the other thing too is, is teenage girls watch these films now. I mean, more mm -hmm. women watch pornography now almost as much as men because they can get it anonymously on the internet. So the studies have shown they used to say, "Oh, it's a it's a man's thing." Mm -hmm. Now women are watching mm -hmm. it. 
Uh, and that also skews their understanding of relationships right. and sexuality. Mm -hmm. What you can expect from a man, how a man should behave, how a man should treat a woman. You know, I mean, fathers and sons need to have con parents and children need to have conversations with uh, pubescent adolescents about what's normal and appropriate and how you interact with one another. And, and all that's concerned for me in my industry. Right. And it's not but, so but much it, for this topic, but I so not, appreciate but your it all, me. it all plays into it. And it does. I think it's important as well. I mean, I think that if women think that that sex, then they're going to be objectified their whole lives. I mean, it's it's just kind of a... You know, you're an object, and I'm and I'm going to get what I need from you, and it's not going to be, it's it's not real sex, it's not real love, it's not real commitment, it's not real um, passion, it's mechanical. One of my sons uh, was watching pornography, and so I had a conversation with him about what he was watching, and he was very defensive, and oh, dad, it, all men do this, and it's a male thing, and there's nothing to it. And I said, if you really feel that way about it, let's bring your mother in and have a conversation about pornography. And he started crying. And I said, you, you know that this is of concern. And I am concerned about the treatment of women and the perspective of women as objects mm -hmm. to be used. And it has to be about relationship and affection. And so that's not what porn's let's about. talk about that. Uh, and, and so we had a whole different conversation than I we'd started out having. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, having it, a, a, a counselor as a parent must be just a real challenge. <laughs> yes, because you know how, where to pull the cord. <laughs> I hope you know it's, it's. Well, it worked. He's turned out really good. So, <laughs> at any rate, throughout our lives, the concern of uh, men about their ejaculation processes is valid and important. And if you reach an age where that is not something that you can do the way that you used to and you're worried about it, talk to your doctor about it. Talk to your doctor about these medicines, but also become aware that you can have fully satisfying uh, orgasmic experiences without the generation of fluid. Thank you for your time. And all you women who think that you're not doing the right thing because there is no ejaculate, it has nothing to do with you. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.